Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. This evening, we are joined by the police service spokesperson, Mr. Ray Hamonga, joins us on the show to talk all things the Zambia Police Service. Uh, Mr. Hamonga, good evening and uh, welcome to Beyond the Headlines. Thank you very much and uh, good evening to all the listeners out there. All right, uh, I must say that uh, the police have been, the police service has been in the limelight um, of late. First, uh, I think we'll look at everything encompassing the, the police uh, regarding what was uh, you know uh, dominating the news uh the, the abductions and the accidents as well we, we we can ignore that because those that uh i should say period three weeks period where we did record um very very uh, huge uh, losses in lives and we can't ignore that topic um but let me begin with um the most topical issue now in the country which is that of the 13 girls who were abducted and subsequently rescued the story brought policing in the spotlight with your you know public confidence hitting a very low mark what caused this and what what are you doing to rectify this okay thank you very much uh, peter for that uh, very important question you may be aware that uh, this kind of a crime actually was one of its first kind in zambia mm. Even when it occurred, we did state that uh, this crime we've never had it before. Now, the way such crimes are supposed to be handled, are supposed to be handled in a particular way. For instance, when we go to the scene of the accident, I mean, of the where the ladies were, were rescued from, mm -hmm. maybe of course we have given a narrative. Maybe I can repeat the narrative how it all happened. Please. You see, on that particular day, we. <clears throat> As police, of course, we have been pursuing this matter, and uh, you, the journalists, actually were on our toes every day, questioning us how or what was happening. And we did actually uh, categorically state that we are not going to issue statements bordering on two principles. The first principle was that uh, we wanted to ensure that we don't issue statements that will border on endangering the life of the persons that were abducted. In this particular case, of course, prominently on the abduction was the issue of um, Pamela Chisupa. And uh, of course, from our records, we are we receiving a report that Pamela Chisupa was abducted. And uh, as opposed to the other, other persons, like for instance, in the case of uh, Faith Mloti. In the case of Faith Mloti, what happened was we received a report from her employer that uh, uh, her mobile money agent had vanished or disappeared with her money mm. and that's the report that we got then later on the parents also came with a report stating that their, uh, their their child was missing and what followed of course is that uh, we had a lot of fake abductions people were coming forward yeah, um, yeah there was a period where exactly yeah. so that's where we are then later on of course we continued our investigation so on this particular day on the 3rd of uh, october we had the uh, in the course of our investigations we had actually a lady who was being lured by one of the the, the, the suspects in this matter actually which is which happened to be Matthew Sikaonga he wanted to abduct her by ruling and say please you can come to my my location and uh, the way he did it was such a way that um, the mobile phone for one of those that were abducted from the university who mm. were not reported and he used such a phone to send a location okay so even for that location it was not in our database of the person of the number that we are interested in you know when you're investigating such cases you you go in details to look at even their profiles and mm. so we we had this girl trail uh, leading us to the location where you're supposed to meet this person so our officers of course as usual we don't expect to see uniformed officers in, in uniform to go and do such an operation so our officers were leading this girl and uh, with a brother and then we were standing the officers were standing afar they go to that house uh, may they go to there there was that uh, altercation they had a, a discussion and then when the abductor realized that actually this girl was not alone because he, he shouted that i told you to come alone why did you come somewhere then they mm. banged the gate and then ran out ran inside got inside there and then officers also saw that there was something there so they started mm. moving towards that place 
and then of course you know when you are when you are a criminal and you know that you saw that you saw that the police actually were closing on closing on him he quickly went there hurriedly got a shirt hurriedly locked the door jumped the office and ran away so officers because the way they, the way he ran it was the houses on the other side and then there's a road on the other side so officers drove trying to chase him on the other side mm. And that's how then inside there also the ladies saw that oh this person is always been looking after us and he's running away so it means there's something which happened so they started breaking the door as well and then they came out when they came out the first one who came out actually jumped the offense as well the others also followed suit and they started going to the various homes now around they cry you know i've been abducted what what what, what? and this person jumped the offense ran to the police ran to the roadside fortunately in fact, this is why we should all be helpful. This lady actually, when she was at the roadside, she was asking for help just by passing her. So, unfortunately, a man, uh, Mr. Elam Sinkala, who actually gave her a lift, and then she said, please take me to the nearest police station. I don't know why I am here. I was abducted. I was in one of the, the, the I was amongst the ladies that were being abducted. Because mm -hmm. they were able to, themselves, when they were in the, in the house, they were able to see our efforts that we were making as police. So maybe she got out there, she rushed to the uh, police post, which is God from me and the police post. She got to the police station, our officers uh, got the report, oh, this is what has happened. Then they mobilized together with the good Samaritan, went back to the house. Meanwhile, remember, those officers also were chased were in pursuit, pursuit of that. So after, yeah. so things were happening simultaneously. Mm. This lady is going to the police to go and report, and then all those officers are pursuing this person. So they say, ah, but then that person was run away. Let's go and check what could have mm. happened there. And that's when they, they came back. Also, these officers also would like to come, come to that house. So, the fact is, when these, all these things were happening, the ladies had come out of the house on mm. their own. Okay? That's the point to note. And unfortunately, we have to state as it is because we have all these records and it's not something that we're just, just trying to cook up. But then, when they came back, they found there are three ladies and uh, three boys and three women. They were trying to help those other three ladies who could not walk because other ladies could not walk on their own. Mm. But others I uh, had come out and they went into various homes asking for for assistance. They please, hey, we've been abducted. We're here. So our officers, of course, you know, detectives. They don't. We, the detectives in their mind, they are still looking for that person who have I've got abducted the yes. the ladies. Yes. So when <coughs> that all happened, what was next? Because you have to understand. A criminal investigations. You don't just do things anyhow. You don't start talking and doing other things. So what happened now? From there, what was important was now to secure the victims. Because these victims now, we can't, we couldn't even talk to them unless they are, they are medical attended and they are stabilized. So police moved in. Of course, we were there. The vehicles were there. We put the vehicles, the ladies in, 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 the, in the motor vehicle. The first thing to do there is to take them to the hospital so they can be examined and settle them down. So that's how we did we we secured the ladies because those are their key witness at that mm. point of course others now it was time for them to be talking on on, on tv and whatever but us our role is to show you secure these women they go to hospital and get medical attention okay uh, i want to bring you back uh, obviously uh, that's uh, the police's side the official statement from the police uh there's there's an issue to do with um um there's an issue to do with uh, a young man, uh, you know, that was in the news that uh, dominated headlines. He narrated his story. A lady knocked at his gate. He opened up. She explained her situation and what was going on. He mobilized a few people, went in there, managed to open the gate. They jumped over the fence, went inside and managed to free uh, these, these ladies. How, how is that story, is that story connected in any way to the official, you know, police position on this, that involvement that we got from that particular gentleman? Now, if these ladies were kept under key and lock all the time, how did that lady come out of the house to go to him to ask for him to come and rescue the rest? That's the question you'd ask him. Because we have told you the, the situation the way it was that one of the ladies mm. in there broke the door, jumped the offense, went to the police to report. So if you are saying, this lady, this boy, one of the ladies came to knock at the gate. So where did she, how did she leave the house? So this is why we have actually, we have, in our statement, we put it made it very clear that people should not make false claims. Because if you are going to make a claim, and mind you, these ladies that we are talking about, they are still there. They are there actually, the person who went to make a port at Jodhpur, she's there. 
Smith so liked me about trying to make it up. Because for us as police, we have always actually made this thing very clear all the time that for us, we are not going to issue statements without investigations. Are, are, you, are you therefore saying that uh, the, the gentleman, Robbie, or should I say, uh, was not telling the truth? Well, of course, you can ask him, say, mm. well, how is it possible that you are saying one of the ladies escaped the house and then came to knock to then go and rescue the others? To me, it doesn't make sense because we have told you what happened. The lady in the house broke the door. She was actually injured. She forced to open the door herself inside. Because this person made left, and the, you know, this person, there were two of them. So they made the other person left. The one person was, was guarding them was there. So when they saw this person going, uh, running around, they knew that something mm -hmm. happened. So they said, this is our only chance for us to come out of this, this place. Of course, he hadn't locked the door, but the lady inside there, she braved, actually, got an axe, there was an axe in there. They were threatening them. She broke the door, and then ran to the police station and reported the matter. And that is what we have. And the lady who did that is there. But for us, of course, like I said, at the first instance, we have to look at what is paramount here. What is important? What is key? Yeah, uh, the key is to secure the lives of the persons. Speak, right. Speaking of securing, Mr. Amonga, uh, because uh, there are concerns as to how the police conducted themselves at that crime scene, because um, after the whole, I should call it a battalion, of, of officers that arrived at the scene and secured the, the ladies, we saw videos being taken of, of these ladies. Now, the question that everybody was asking, were officers taking videos of these victims instead of securing them and making them sure making sure that they are safe no of course uh, as it is in in our country people are always trying to do things not, not correct when it happened of course there was that commotion and officers were busy trying to secure these persons mm. others started took to social media of course filming persons we against actually their their, their their privacy which is not correct of course, like I'm saying, our officers were concerned with the issues of the, the victims. And that's what we did. Secure the victims and, of course, we were later on went to barricade that place as well. Of course, you know, there was, there was a lot of people that were coming to that place. But, of course, we tried as much as possible that we could do to ensure that these persons are secured. And, in fact, even as we are talking now, we are very still constrained to state certain facts. Mm. The simple reason that we want to allow these uh, ladies to heal completely even as we like i said we will ensure that first of all we we had them taken to the hospital attended to and then now started talking to them just to get one or two things okay yes. uh, i want to go back to the video because <clears throat> is there any investigations uh, investigation being carried out because one of the videos showing the ladies um seated on the floor and being asked to identify themselves by a plain clothed police officer at that time they've been secured is there any sort of inf internal investigation happening as to who took that video and who circulated it because it infringed on the privacy of of those ladies and is that the way the police are supposed to conduct themselves did they breach any sort of code of conduct of the police by taking that video well of course uh, these are victims of uh, uh, gender-based violence and a lot of people have, uh, have again had some people making headlines out of nothing because these are victims of gender-based violence because uh, it's not supposed to be like that of course the main core business now for us is to prosecute those persons that actually inflicted these crimes against this, these ladies. Mm. Of course, as we go on, we'll look at all those things if it need be for us to ensure that, okay, what could have, who could have done that? But of course, you know where people are, especially we know how we Zambians behave nowadays. We know there's an instance, the first thing you do instead of calling for assistance or maybe even an emergency, I mean, uh, or the hospital facilities or, or rescue operations is to take a phone and start filming, which is very, very unfortunate. And I think the media should help in disseminating this but, but clearly, that, that scene was secured by you, the police service. Shouldn't you start from within to find out who had that phone in that particular place? No, of course, it's not. I'm not saying that that could not have been happened done by the police officer, or mm. neither am I saying it could have been done by the public. I'm saying we need to investigate. And remember what I told you in the beginning that for us, we don't just speculate. You people, you are at liberty in the media, you can issue a statement tomorrow, you put an apology. But mm. for us, we try by all means to ensure that we investigate after investigating, then we give the official statement. So that, that matter can be looked into. It's not an issue that uh, is very difficult. We can, of course, go back to check who could have secured that video and maybe see if someone will be held accountable for that action. Okay. Uh, since we're talking about the media, uh, in, your, in your eyes as the police service, how did the media cover this story? 
Well, it was very, very bad. It was terrible. Uh, you know, when we are talking of victims of gender-based violence, they have some uh, leeway or privacy to help them to heal. You know, I will tell you for a fact that if you are going to investigate like a case of rape, even defamation, do you know that when we are talking to this person, in, in, uh, interviewing her, to tell us of how it happened, it's just as good as she's going through the same trauma that she went through when the act was being done on her. Mm -hmm. That is how bad it is. So no wonder even the media, when they were busy uh, floating out these pictures, we are simply injuring our, our ladies, taking them through back to what they went through, which is very, very unfortunate, especially in a country like Zambia where we claim to be a Christian nation. Such things need not be done because for these persons to heal completely, they need to be off the public in solitary confinement, cancelled, and they shouldn't be seeing these things flying around on social media. By so doing, you are actually inflicting more, more harm than good on them. Okay. Um, how, how did you expect the media to report this? Because it's, it's, it was a, a huge story. It was going on in the media. The media were keeping checks on you, and you would attest to that. That there were some media houses that you know made it a point to to check on the police day by day as to how the investigation was going. Don't you think they had you know the right to be in those in that on that crime scene and report on that very day on a story that they've been chasing for over six months? Reporting on the crime scene is not a problem. What was a problem is showing the images of the victims. Okay. That is where we have a problem. In issues of reporting, issues relating to what transpired, that's not a problem. But showing the images of these persons, that's where the problem is, because that is, that's their privacy. Okay, that's infringing on their privacy. Because when they see that, they'll be able to, they'll start actually going through the same trauma they went through. And that's the point I'm driving home. Mm. That please, even now, we should desist by all means to circulate the pictures that depicted these persons in that state. Because mm. by so doing, we are actually reminding them or taking them through the same uh, trauma and pain that they under, under, underwent. So we do not need to continue securing these pictures because by so doing, actually, we are infringing on their privacy and also making them go through the same pain that they went through. So if you really care of what happened, or you want to help them to heal, we should desist circulating their images in that state. All right. I know that on the very day there were some media houses that carried out uh, an interview with uh, the rescuer, as was seen in the public, not by the police, because the police say uh, you have a different whole uh, statement on it. The fact from you, as a police service, there was nobody else involved in the rescue but the Zambia Police Service. You saw the promos, uh, you know, that were being aired to feature the rescuers. Didn't the police see these promos? And why didn't you stop them if you believed it would interfere with investigations or put these persons in danger to those people uh, you know, that were perpetrating this crime? At that, at that time, they were still on the loose. Thank you very much for that very important question. Uh, believe you me, whether you like it or not, on that particular day, I called I know the media institution you're referring to. Mm. It's Diamond TV, which had covered that interview. And I called them to tell them, please, could you stop airing what you are doing? Because by then, we don't actually have apprehended the suspect. So I told them, you are putting this young man's life in danger. Because if you are going to continue doing that, you don't know who the person who is behind this thing, who are still pursuing such persons. Fortunately, by, the, by zero two hours, these persons actually had already been up, were apprehended, but I did. We did actually uh, get in touch with the media house, and uh, I am happy to report that immediately I talked to them. I'm sure you saw how that show ended. Mm. I want to believe that it's because of what the intervention that we did as Zambia police standing police. I think it's not right for us to continue airing or exposing this person in this particular uh, uh, in this manner. So we did reach out to them and told them please could you stop that interview it's not in it's not one it's not security or, or security or, or, um, it's not security it's, it's actually a, a breach on security on the person that you are, you are exposing if it's true what he has done it's to put him in a very uh, dangerous or, or awkward position um 
let's look at the person that was involved himself. D- did you try to have a conversation with, with the person, the purported rescuer? Uh, because you are the expert here. Did you try to sit down with his family and tell them, listen, you can't do this. You, you have to stay mute. You have to stay out of the public eye until we have these people in custody. No, of course, like I'm saying, the interview ran in the evenings. And that was about in 1920. But I think the video started running earlier than that. No, no, you remember no. the, the video circulating of him. Yeah. In the day, as, as the police were there in the background of his video while he was being interviewed as well. Yeah, of course, uh, they could have been there. But uh, what I'm saying is, you know, when you have a crime scene like that, you have to prioritize, uh, prioritize your, your actions. Otherwise, you lose it all. Like I told you earlier on, the first priority for us was to secure the victims, mm-hmm. then move on. We are now looking for the suspect. So whatever was going on at that particular time was not of much importance to us at that time. Because we needed to ensure that we do these things. Because if you don't do them, then the whole case will collapse. And again, we didn't want to find ourselves in a situation whereby we, we lose it all, we lose focus on what we are supposed to be doing. So on that particular day, of course, like I've told you, we did actually make... I make an appeal. Let's like, so try, like for instance, like it was on on Diamond TV. It was easy for us to tell them that please could you stop doing this. But this thing that on social media, we had no control over them. Mm. Like the interview that they did, and they were just uh, they were just um, they just going viral. We had no control over them. But for the purposes of, like even uh, uh, Diamond TV that uh, did that, I think even ZBC also that aired him, and I mm. called them to please you do not need to do that because you are putting this person in danger. And again, funny enough. After we did that, then we were sending the same question from the media again, asking and say, are you going to provide security for him? So you, you see how awkward at times things can be. They expose somebody, you, the media, expose somebody again, start calling and say, are you going to provide security for him? Oh, wow, you're the experts here. Mr. Amoga, if, if, you, if, you, if you point out a, an error, shouldn't, shouldn't it be fixed? Didn't he, did the police provide security for this particular gentleman and his family? Or was any other action taken by the Zambia Police Service? Of course, it was fortunate that he was actually also within the neighborhood watch. I mean, the neighborhood where this crime happened. So we, of course, we are aware that we moved in and we secured that place. And we had police presence, even up to now, is still there because it's a crime scene. So the security that was uh, given to the crime scene was also extended to the, the, the neighborhood, neighborhood around that area. So he was also cutted in that area. Mm. Um, speaking of the crime scene, uh, Mr. Hamoga, uh, that very day, it looks like you know it was free for all at that house we saw videos of people just running into the house taking videos uh you know anybody that was around that area could just you know walk into uh you know that yard and they were taking videos they were taking pictures we saw members of parliament uh, going to that house that very day taking pictures outside the house why wasn't this crime scene secured quicker by the police and you know uh, cut it off and, and people moved you know moved in and out of the house at their whim and they made videos we saw a picture of a coffin inside the house what was really going on with that crime scene why wasn't it secured quickly by the zambia police service uh, of course uh, you have to understand that uh, this time in the era of technology even if you have a phone you can be able to film but of course we we did our best to ensure that the place is secured of course, if somebody did film one, I mean, one person on the phone did film in there, then it would have been shared and then it's just gone viral. Of course, everybody was interested to see about that thing. But however, as police, we did our best to ensure that that area is secured. We did actually secure it and ensure that people were, were turned back from that area. I remember actually myself when we were with the Inspector General Police, we went to visit the scene, uh, crime scene. We were able to stop some media houses say please no 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 could you mm. please step out because this area is need, need to be uh, processed and uh, this is why one thing i should also understand i think we we still have a problem in terms of crime reporting because uh, you know uh, at times even journals become noisy noisy on areas that are not supposed to be there mm. for instance if somebody tells them that no you can't go in here because it's a crime scene they want to go in but of course before we process it you cannot be allowed to go in but once we process it you are, can, we are free to go in there because we have done everything because we need to get certain things before uh, you can move in 
there are issues of DNA, all mm. those things. If you go there, and, and, that's, and, and that's where my concern is because we, we, we saw that video of uh, the, uh, a group of men that were filming and, and just you know narrating through what they had found in that house, and there was no police presence at that time. Uh, a, a coffin on one side. They opened a few doors. They said what they, what they were seeing appeared to be like a shrine, and, and people you know were interested to find out what next from the police. What, is there any truth to what we saw in that video? Uh, what was the coffin used for? Was there a shrine in that house? Did we lose a life in that house? Okay, the, the issue of the, 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 the coffin, yes, there was a coffin, like you saw it. But the issue of somebody killed, we don't have that information as far as we're concerned. Because we did our investigations and so far investigation revealed that there was nobody was killed there. It could have been just uh, maybe the people wanted just to use as a threat to the, to the, to the ladies that we know have killed this person. You saw if we were also, also going to kill you. So from our investigations, we didn't have that as, as far as we're concerned. As, as far as of now, there was no, no person who was killed. And uh, we, are, we are yet, if there will be any, any that would have been killed. But from our investigations so far, we, re we reviewed that nobody was, was killed from that. That place, and of course, mind you, don't remember, don't forget that we did mention that there are people that went into the house to lift the three uh, ladies who are not able to walk on their own. So those are the point, maybe that that be the point where we had people who had gone with phones and could have taken pictures of that, that, that place. Mm. But however, thereafter, we secured the place to ensure that we can be able to get as much evidence as we needed to prosecute these persons. Okay, um, what could be done? differently in a in a situation like this from the zambia police uh, uh, zambia police's perspective and here i want to look at all aspects that you've looked at uh the neighborhood how should people in the community work with the police service to secure a crime scene and how should the media react in the future if we're faced with with a similar you know incident for the neighbors please you need to be very careful if it's as much as possible, allow for police presence to be there in, in the first place. If police are coming to the scene, if you are a neighbor, for instance, let me just give an example. If somebody has just dropped dead, before you touch such a person, inform the police because you need that scene needs to be processed. So it's very important that they allow for police to come in and move whatever could be there. For in this particular case, where people, where uh, the ladies had come out, and uh, the police were also uh, there. Others were, were, I mean, were, were not were, were there. It, it's very important that you allow for police to to arrive to I mean, to process the scene because this is why we have a problem. Because at times, if people just go there and they start touching things, anyhow, mm. it becomes a problem. Because for instance, we have fingerprints. So if you start touching things, then then you check there, your fingerprints are found there. Then you be you can also be actually joined to the crime. Say, well, you are, must have been here as well. Mm. So it it lessens uh, if police presence is is allowed to to attach the scene before you, before it's, uh, before it's processed. If the scene is, is there and then you allow police to come in and process it, it makes, makes it very easy for the police to prosecu prosecute. Because even the issue of elimination now, we are just now asking, how did your fingerprints find yourself here? Mm. And then you start going around explaining, and then that takes a bit of time for us to process the, I mean, prosecute the case. Then um, to the neighbors, I think it's very important that neighbors realize that the police is there, or members of the community realize that the police is there to fight crime. In the absence of police, just know that you're talking about chaos. The police is all about human rights protection. That is our role as police. There's nothing else. It's human rights protection. Yes, we may have bad eggs among ourselves that break human rights, but that is not the core mandate of this, this institution. The core mandate of this institution is to protect human rights. So policing is so all about protection of human rights. Okay. Um, Mr. Amonga, I have to bring you to another issue to do with the video regarding this this, this subject. Uh, it's it's in this incidences like the video of, uh, you know, one of the suspects that went viral while he was being interrogated that brings, you know, the police service into ridicule. How in God's name did that, you know, did that video leak in? What, what kind of interrogation was that? Was it done by an officer? Because had you investigated to find out who did it or you're already aware of who did that uh, interrogation and who leaked that video? 
Well, of course, uh, when something happens like that, we of course institute investigations to ascertain what could have happened in that in that in that situation. And of course, that is the matter that we we'll look at and investigate and see who could have been behind that uh, that that video, and also ensure that that such a person is punitive, if he's a police officer, punitive action again are taken against him because, of course. You know, you if you give an, a, a criminal any latitude to speak, you will not speak anything good about police because he's already he knows he has nothing to lose. Mm. Of course, if he is he's apprehended, then there's nothing to lose. He can say anything. Okay. So for us as police, of course, we we remain focused, and of course, such kind of sentiments they don't really worry us because we know. Even though about cases where we arrest uh, criminals, when they have stolen money, they will start accusing. No, the police also got money from this this money. Mm. Then when you investigate and uh, call the witnesses or, the, or the complainants, they say no, no, actually, the money was stolen so much, and what has been covered is what was actually stolen. So it's not it's surprising for us as police officers to have such instances where a criminal is given an opportunity to speak. They will speak anything because they know that they, they, I mean, they, they have nothing to lose. But should it be done in that way, Mr. Hamonga? Uh, no, no. Should, should they be filmed? Do they have legal representation? What's the procedure, uh, you know, th that you use to get a statement on video or of, a, of a suspect? Because at the end of the day, that, that, that those people have their day in court. Did we need to know in that manner uh, the details of this case? No, in fact, you know, whatever was even recorded in that video is not even adding up anything to, uh, to, to the prosecution of the, of, of, of the matter. Because for us in, in police, when you are doing a statement, it's such as a written statement. Mm -hmm. It has to be written or even typed at times. So even when they, those people are doing all those things, they are just doing it out of fun because they are having phones and whatever. But really, that cannot be used as part of the evidence in court. Mind you, in fact, when you, are, when you have a suspect, a suspect you cannot fume him because he's a suspect. Mm -hmm. Not until he's convicted. Because when you are going to to, to fume somebody who's a suspect, then you, there's, uh, there's just a question of he's just been accused. Not until he's proven guilty. So you cannot start fuming such a person because he's a suspect. For the simple reason that he's a suspect. So fuming is not part of our way we use it for evidence. We only fume as police when we go to scene reconstruction. And that's where that's an area which I sort of mentioned mm. because that's why I have a problem with journalists as well. You know, when you are going for senior reconstruction, when you take a criminal to take you through how he did that crime, mm -hmm. we have to film that to sh and demonstrate and is demonstrating. So when we are filming that 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 uh, uh, film, we don't need any journalist to be there. And at times we have clashes. There is no one to do one sound of film. No, 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 no. That is specifically for evidence gathering and is supposed to be taken in court where it's going to be played before the, the magistrate or judge to see mm. how that person did or to demonstrate how what he was doing. So that's the only time when we're able to film a suspect. And also we do also what is called identification parade. Okay? We put people maybe like it in this case we put maybe eight people, ten people, and then we ask the ladies to go through that 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 uh, and this for that lineup to identify the, 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 the suspects. So there we have only to identify the suspect, we we'll take a picture and we we'll put it in the album and to be produced as evidence in court. So this is, these are the only points where you're supposed to, to do that. But of course, like I'm saying, I was saying now in nowadays because of this uh, technology of phones, people are able to do these things without even due care. Again, again, Mr. Amonga, this video was taken in a place that looks to be a very secure place that only had police access because those people were handcuffed. Was this taken in police cells? Because you could see that other people in there were sleeping. The other person was sleeping? Yes. Doing the other, the other. Yeah. Of course, we, we are yet to establish exactly what would have transpired. You know, uh, Peter, like I said, when you are fighting such a, a, a big case, you have to put your priorities in order. What is it that is going to help you? Like, for instance, if we discover by that filming or the video, what is it going to help us prosecute these two people that did these crimes against these 13 ladies? Again, it's, 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 it's about public opinion and, 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 and confidence in the Zambia Police Service yes. with how they are conducting themselves. Don't, don't you think that should, should also matter? Yes, it matters. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Put our priorities for it. For now, by the way, this five million eight appeared in court. Mm. So for now, we have to put our priorities in, in, in order. What is very important in our priority of, of, of this case, in this case, is to ensure that we have enough evidence against these persons. We talk to the ladies, gather enough evidence, and prosecute them. 
these other small cases like of course like you have said this case of, of the, the video that that's a matter that can be looked into and it's not a problem we are going to look at it and see how best this matter can be sorted out all right that's all right for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below i'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers once again i go by the name of mutatim pondum i love you peace i gotta go